calling in from North Carolina. G, what's going on? Hey, I'm doing well. How are you guys doing today? I'm doing fantastic. We got a new intro. We got uh, some new merch we're going to show off later. Uh, life's cool. Life's yeah, cool right now. Sounds great. Yeah, so what do you want to talk to us about, G? Yeah, I wanted to ask you guys if you have any tips on, and it's often that you just talked about, like, the nonsense around weight loss. Do you mm-hmm. have any tips on kind of identifying and uncovering superstitions or magical thinking in your own, you know, daily life and habits? Mm-hmm. Yeah, how to figure out whether the beliefs you have are true or not. Yeah, this is a tough one. And it's something I've been asked before um, because it's something I try to do. Um, I'm lucky enough to where I get to be on a show every week where people ask me about my beliefs sometimes. And sometimes I have to think about it, right? Um, But, you know, not everybody has that luxury. So how do you figure stuff out? I think it's like, I don't know. Like there's, there's different ways that it can happen. Like if you ever go on Twitter or if you go on Reddit or something and you look at a topic that um, people study a lot about, um, let's maybe uh, migration. Let's talk about migration as an issue, right? Like um, you realize when you talk to people who have looked into this stuff for long periods of time, I think that's, that's when I tend to learn the most about what my beliefs actually are and what seems to be held out by experts or people who have studied the field or people who have just been talking about this stuff for a long time. Uh, if I'm ever interested in something or I realize, oh, somebody talked about something the other day and I don't really know much about that. I mean, that's what I do. I just start finding the communities first and see what kind of sources they're looking at um, and just figure out what's going on from there. But like it's a it's a never ending process. You know, it's constantly iterative. I mean, I say this every week now. Uh, I, I'm just gonna say it again. I went vegan. Okay. I've been doing that for a little bit. And that's something I wouldn't have done if I hadn't been having conversations with people and, and thinking about the issues and really looking into this stuff. So I guess it's like for myself, it's like a challenge. I, I really like to challenge myself with my beliefs, but I don't know. You kind of have to have a drive to even want to look at that in the first place. What do you think Oz? Um, I've never been a, um, you know, other than having a God belief at one point, I've never really been a superstitious guy. I had a lot of superstitions. So that's, that's what, when he, when he asked that, I kind of had to think like, you know, do I have any, maybe, and that's, that's probably uh, tough for me to say, cause I've just never, I never been a, you know, super superstitious guy. So I, I hate to give a bland answer, uh, but I, I wouldn't know how to evaluate that to give an honest answer. Hmm. Well, there you go. I hear you guys both talking about like, and especially the two topics you raised, um, you know, hum- I assume you mean human migration. Yeah, I meant human migration. I just said migration, and I realized afterwards, I was like, that could mean anything. I, I could be talking about geese. That doesn't mean anything, but yeah. But I guess that's the hard part, right, is that your positions on very important things to you right now feel mm-hmm. evidenced and feel researched. Almost none of us would say, oh, yeah, no, I, I, I decided on that really important thing just because I felt good for 30 seconds. Most of us think we've already done some amount of work. So how it's do you true. Think out the thing, you know that maybe we we are just acting on without realizing not that it was it wasn't evidence. You're remembering your sixth grade teacher fondly, but they didn't take time to explain it to you. You don't actually uh, know much about that. Like, something yeah, you're ignorant about, truly ignorant about, and something that you've you know researched and reached your conclusion for a good reason. They feel basically the same in their conclusion. You're totally right. It's the Dunning-Kruger effect, yeah. right? It's this idea of, hey, like I, I feel like I'm an expert on this thing. You know, I've heard about it. I, I've talked to people about it. And then you realize, oh, wait, no, shit. I don't know anything about this. And actually, there's way more to this than I thought. I've had that experience with so many things. I had that with Christianity. I had that um, when I was first reading about like anarchism. I had I, I thought it was just um, dudes who just wanted to like throw Molotov cocktails at federal buildings or something. And I didn't realize, oh, they actually have like a deeper history there that uh, whether or not you agree with it, it's it's there's at least something there that I didn't know about um, or or I, I don't know. There's so many things. A human migration is one of them. I, I read a book. Um, this was a couple months ago now on on that topic. And I was just like, man, th- there's parts of this issue that I didn't even consider until you know i actually read it from experts and and you feel the same either way 
because it's like, oh, now I read this book and now I know way more. But I guarantee if I read another book, I'll probably have that feeling again with other stuff I hadn't considered. So, yeah, there's no way around getting being human, I guess. That's just the human experience is thinking right. we know everything <laughs> until we don't. So, <laughs> right. I hear you. Yeah. What about you? Have you found uh, any remedies to this or what, what's what's on your mind? Is there a belief that you're thinking that I, you don't know is real or not? So, well, so for, for one example, one thing you just said made me think of what might be a good method. Tell me what you think. It sounds like you're basically saying, you know, research the things that are interesting to you. And almost mm -hmm. always you're going to learn something and that will change your understandings. So mm -hmm. what I'm thinking is if there's a – issue where I disagree on someone, I'm, I don't care to argue on too many of the things that I really care about because I don't, it just doesn't go well. It stresses me out. Yeah. You know? And even participating could hurt the people that are most affected by these issues because the things I'm loudest about are things like, you know, race equality and treating mm -hmm. treating transgender or gender nonconforming people well. I yeah. don't want to host a conversation where they get hurt. So yeah. it's kind of up to me to teach myself about it in case I have a bad belief. But it sounds like what I could be doing is if I ever do disagree with someone, everything I say, I should, I guess I should be ready to point to where I learned it. Yes. And if they can criticize that in a meaningful way, I, I already think I'm pretty sure I'm open to saying, I don't know about that yet. So I'll read, I'll read something else. I'll read something different. See what Absolutely. Yes. And then Absolutely. Maybe, you know, if they hear that thing I've read. Maybe they say, oh, I've never read that. I doubt it's, you know, even if they argue with me, I doubt it's true. You're probably wrong. That can't be right. Okay, fine. Mm -hmm. Go read it. You know, tell me what you think after you read it. Yeah. Yeah. Listen you know, first. Share the information and not a conclusion. We might have something else to talk about. But if we don't share the information or a conclusion, one of us might just have something to learn. It's, it's not worth fighting about at that point. Yeah, I agree. Listen first speak later right I, I i i think that's a good policy but you're right it's like if we're not drawing from the same information pool we're almost not even having the same conversation like i i encounter this all the time um i mean like i i i, I try to be an activist in my real life you know i don't push the conversation so, well okay sometimes if the conversation i'm having with friends and family who you know um will mildly touch on something i might ask them questions about what they think about something you know and i'll, and I'll give my perspective if asked most of the time it's they're asking me, right? I'm not really trying to push things necessarily, but um, it's like the information that I know about, just the books that I've read, the articles I've read, the people I've talked to, like that's, those are experiences that most people just haven't had. And so it's hard to convey everything I've learned from all of those things in just a single conversation. I mean, you really can't, there's really no way to do it. But I think the approach that we have to take is, okay, you shouldn't be trying to flip people's mind on something all in one go, because that's generally just not how people work. I think the idea is give them some information maybe they didn't know before, at least. At least start with yeah. that. At least teach them something sure, new. Yeah, and see if you can learn something new from that conversation too, because conversations are two-way things, you know, and people want to feel heard. Yeah just as much as you want to speak to people. And if people don't feel like they're being heard, they're probably not going to listen to you either. Um, so yeah, I agree. Even though it can feel like, oh, I know so much about this thing. Um, some, I don't know. I, I, I learn new, new things almost every time I talk to people, even on stuff that I know a, a lot about. I, at least I'll hear like, oh, you heard th about this thing. Here's an argument I haven't heard about. Where'd you get that from, you know? I guess that's my challenge. Like when you, when you mention your family, my family is so polarized. Like mm -hmm. it's, it's people who will – very kind in conversation but then turn around and just absolutely trash immigrants for the – literally just for the sake of not speaking English. Yeah. Or yeah. like, you know, civil rights lawyers and like very compassionate, empathetic people. And uh, maybe somebody out there wants to criticize that I've – for those that polar opposites <laughs> – you know, ask me the right question. Give me the information to suggest it's not true. I'll change my mind. Then. But <laughs> that's my challenge is yeah. people that I know well enough to have those intimate conversations with. I don't know of anyone in my family that disagrees with me and that I could learn from. Not because I mm. haven't tried, but I've, I've seen the information. Well, well, air quotes, when I say this, now, so, yeah, yeah I, 
let, let, let me let me let me tell you this because I know what you're saying, right? It's like I don't feel like I can learn anything from these people because I've I've read more about this than them. I've done more research on this than them. And so when I say learn from them, I don't necessarily mean um you know content on the subject, but more about where they're coming from. Empathizing with people is really important, I think, when when talking about this stuff, especially if it's family and figuring out, okay, you have this belief for a reason. If you have a belief negatively about, you know, immigrants, Mexican immigrants in particular in this country, because that's, you know, it's something we talk about a lot. Like there's a reason why you have that belief, whether that's a, a, an observation you had or something you heard from somebody else, you know, like you can be a mirror and still help people figure out where that comes from mm -hmm. and, and, and help them in that examination process. And so like that, that's what I mean when you learn something from someone not necessarily, oh, I'm going to learn a new argument about this thing, but just like, hey, like, what what about the human experience can I learn from you? Um, and and how will that change your perspective if we talk about it, you know, or change my perspective if I'm talking about it? Right. And and I, I think that goes to uh, <clears throat> even the, uh, uh, it might have been uh, backstage when we were talking about, you know, where <clears throat> where did this belief come from? You know, how, how did you arrive there and why do you hold that belief? You know, and it's still still kind of that, you know, uh, Socratic uh, method, so to speak. Uh, but it's still the same thing, even though we're, you know, um, we're talking about you know, whether it's immigration or whatever it is. I, I always want to find out why people hold a belief, no, no matter what it is. Why do you believe that to be true? What were the steps or the methods you took to arrive to truth? And I think just listening there. If that was uh, my family and, and, you know, personally, my family, I, I think has some um, pretty crazy um, views or beliefs. And I'm constantly asking why, you know, why they believe that and how they got there. So I think that's that's still a healthy method to uh, to take in that approach. Yeah, you're not necessarily wanting to contradict people all the time with, well, here's the right answer. It's just more like, well, how did you get your answer? Okay. I think that's a, a good way to put right, it. Right. But, but yeah, what do you think? Yeah, G? Did we help you at all tonight? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it, it's hard to apply that to like, you know, the the main driver of my question is that I'm I'm on your side of things. I'm atheist, and mm -hmm. not recently either. So I think I'm generally without, you know, magical thinking. I mean, I'm not saying without flawed thinking. I make mistakes all the time. Yeah, but I don't let myself rest when I'm aware of a lack of good reason. Mm -hmm. I treat it as, well, if that's the decision I have to make right now and that's the best conclusion I've got, I'll go with it. But that's something I need to research. You know, when I get off, I need to Google that country and learn more about that language because I, I think that name comes from there, but I don't know and I don't want to profile somebody. I mean, even little stuff like that, sorry to get it yeah. on a tangent. Yeah, but, absolutely. I, you know, I, I don't think I have those mental habits of just jumping, you know, leaping over problems that I, like the moment I think there could be a problem, I'll even end up asking, you know, asking somebody contradictory questions where I've had people in conversations like, wait, so where do you stand? I was like, oh, I'm just trying to figure out how you're thinking about it. But yeah, actually, I think this. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's good, too. You know, I don't think I have those habits. And that's the, you know, so anyway, yeah, it, you did it. Yeah. It's hard I, to I tried, you know, like, and yeah, I just want to say real quick on that, because I try to avoid giving my like outside of this show, because I give my opinion a lot on this show. But if I'm having conversations, I I refrain from giving my opinion until you know, way later into the conversation, because I think that can set off a different path from the conversation that I might be interested in going, right? Because I'm with you. It's like, I want to know how other people are thinking about this. Um, but I will say, it's not always bad to give your take, because again, your take may be something that they've never heard before, and you're exposing them to totally different information. Um, I, I can't tell you how many conversations I've had with people when we're talking about the definition of atheism, and they've never heard this <laughs> idea of, oh, a lack of belief or or, you know, it's not necessarily like a belief in science or something like that. It's it's something else. So, yeah, like that that could be helpful, too, in a conversation. So don't don't stress yourself out and no. thinking, you know, oh, I'm giving I'm giving my, too much yeah, of my no, take. I don't think any of my friends would accuse me of not being assertive enough. Um, ah, I gotcha. But I, you know, I am careful, though, to see, like, who am I making room for in a conversation? How could that hurt? either my friends, loved ones, or other audience. I'm not going to make room, for example, for, you know, someone like Richard Spencer to come to the, you know, next vote on human rights talk. Yeah. Don't really want to make space for him, for example. Yeah. 
yeah, I don't want to do leading questions. You know, you don't want to like pretend like you're interested just to make a point, you know, like I see that happen a lot too. Um, like it just takes a genuine interest. And if you're genuinely curious and you genuinely think you can meet people in the middle on where they stand and make them feel comfortable so that they can be candid with you. Like I I've seen amazing things happen when, when people do that. Um, so yeah, good for you, G. I, I want to get to some next callers here, but I'm glad you talked to us Thank about you. it. I hope, um, you continue to, um, you know, build this practice of talking to people because I do think it's important and I appreciate your call. Hope to hear from you again. Thanks. Yeah, you guys have a great week. Thanks. You too. You too. Yeah. what do you think about that call, Oz? Uh, when it gets to that, that's when people start talking about superstitions, that's probably the one, one of the ones that I pause on, like, like I said earlier, and, and cause I, I want to be honest and not just give an answer for the sake of giving an answer. Um, because um, I, I don't, I don't connect with superstitions. You know, some mm -hmm. people are like, Oh, if you step on a crack, this is going to happen. Or if you, you know, do certain, you know, like certain, certain, just actions will then, um, you know, garner this, mm -hmm. this outcome. Like I, I've just never really bought into that. So it's hard for me to wrap my head around that part. Um, but yet I still believe in the God for 30 some years, you know? So, so I have that yeah. disconnect there where it's like, yeah, I believe I, I did have a very strong belief in a God, but the whole um, superstition thing I've never been able to connect with. So I don't know what it's like to hold a belief in a superstition. You know well, what, I mean? what do you think about this though, Oz? Because I think, you, I would broadly expand that definition of superstition even more. Let's talk about um, fears about like LGBT people, for example. I mean, I I grew up around, you know, in Texas, there's a lot of stereotypes about gay people. There's a lot of stereotypes about how they act, about, um, you know, what kind of activities they do in their own private lives, which I sh nobody should be caring about except themselves. Um, and like that in itself is kind of a superstitious belief almost right because it's like i'm believing in stuff that's not actually happening or not really there you know it's it's not superstitious in the sense it's paranormal but i am believing in things that aren't happening when i think they are happening right like i i don't know i think you can kind of fit that in there yeah it, it, it would I, I guess that would be a, 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 a just a false belief you mm -hmm. know it's if if someone is um you know, LGB, uh, um, I can never say, get all the letters out. So I apologize. It's not, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I just never get them all at the same time. But I, yeah. I have no, um, you know, I have no preconceived notions or anything of how they should or shouldn't act. And I, you mm -hmm. know, I, I love them. Uh, my stepdaughter is lesbian, you know, and I, and I, I'm her biggest fan, you know, yeah. um, you know, but going back to, you know, when I was a Christian, yes, I was taught that, you know, oh, uh, well, you don't hang out with, you know, was that, or, you know, anybody that's drinking alcohol or anybody that's, you know, doing drugs, because all those things will lead to you possibly doing those same things. Um, you know, so, uh, so yeah, false, false beliefs. Uh, and, and if we can tie those things together, then, then yes, I guess I did have superstitions, but when I hear superstitions, I think more of the, the zany, you know, I agree. I agree. I'm just kind of playing devil's advocate here a little bit because I, yeah. I guess recently, you know, I, I talk about QAnon a lot too. It's like, you know, QAnon beliefs, while a lot of them are political, they're borderline religious. In fact, a lot of scholars have said, yeah, this is kind of a religious cult um, because they talk about the government in ways that uh, one might call superstitious, I guess, um, in, in the government's actions and what's happening in the deep state and stuff like that. So I don't know. Just thought maybe I could make that connection. But uh, I want to go to another caller. 